When I make this video, the final episode of Game of Thrones recently aired. I bring this up because the fans of Game of Thrones usually put it out there as a grown-up version of the childish notions of good and evil presented in J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings trilogy. And what? Game of Thrones is now scored for nerds. Um, this is a shallow and childish understanding of the Lord of the Rings. At the same time, there is not really any denying that the themes are rather reactionary. It dramatizes the latest invasion of an outside virus to conquer a susceptible but strong body. It could also be read metaphorically as the story of a communist invasion by Stalin. No matter how I read it, I must read it as the work of a reactionary mind. However, the parts, I think, is what makes it work as a novel and as a film. The story in itself of a hobby trying to destroy a weapon of mass destruction is one of great moral clarity and psychological insight. The Christian themes are obvious. The moral failure of humanity should doom us, but we are saved by forces beyond our control. And the story of Frodo is one of a person pulling himself through the mud of addiction, arriving on the other side, irreparably damaged by the experience. It is my second favorite character arc of the entire story. This concerns mainly the movies, but my favorite part of them were always, ever since I was a kid, the two towers and the parts taking place in Rohan. And as I grew older, I noticed something about Theoden the king. Firstly, I noticed how the films changed the motivations around, giving Theoden the motivation for going to war that in the books belonged to Eowyn, that is, wanting to die. This then grew into a fascination with the character. In the films, this is not an accident, or it doesn't look like one, since the character development is planted all the way back in the two towers. Mainly, it takes place over three scenes, but I'm going to include two more for the sake of completion. In the first scene, it's where Aragorn and Theoden talks about who can come to help. Here, Theoden still has hope. He is still afraid of what will happen to them and despairs because of their loneliness. In the second scene, it's where they are barricaded in the keep, where Aragorn asks him to ride out together. There is this brilliant subtle shift in the eyes of Theoden here when he decides he will ride out, probably dying. The third scene is when Aragorn tells everyone that the beacons of Gondor has been lit. There's this small moment of montage where there is a moment of doubt about whether the Rohirrim will go to war. And then the release afterwards, seeing the gathering forces. The fourth scene is the ride of the Rohirrim where they arrive at Minas Tirith. Here he's in total death mode, in a way it's tragic because he's willing to lead all of his men into death for the sake of resistance. It's a very high romantic scene with a total knowledge of failure, the blaring trumpets, Theoden dragging his sword against the spears of his men and the yells of death. As a side note, what I think is most sad in this entire sequence is the two shots of Mary. First when he joins the yelling, and then when they are riding and he yells again. I think it's sad with this uh, naive hobbit being drawn into a kind of death cult-like behavior he has no understanding or context for. Then there is the death scene. I've heard critiques of this part that Theoden's speech is too long to be quite realistic, but I think it fits. It's the end of a man who has done everything, who fought knowing he can't win. As a psychological portrait of political leader in a time of crisis, I find it very moving. But it's not just political, it is a personal dimension. The ability to dramatize this psychological development without it ever being the subject of the dialogue. The only character with greater psychological depth is probably Gollum. Even Frodo in the end is a sufferer. His purpose is to suffer for the sins of mankind. And Sam, I think, is treated so badly by the films that his steps kind of go away in them. The entire story of Theoden is one of depression. Going from being stuck in the darkness caused by the death of his son, turning that darkness into a purpose for living and fighting for a life worth living. There is something to this kind of Viking ethos right now, I think, both for me personally, and also as someone who stands at a place politically where there are no real chance of victory for my beliefs. When there is no hope, what is best? To fall into despair 
or to try against hopelessness.